Welcome everyone to Storytime. My name's Christopher and it's so nice to be with you again. Now many of you know how I like to begin Storytime. It's with a little song called Clap Everybody and Say Hello. And it goes like this. Clap everybody and say hello, say hello, say hello. Clap everybody and say hello. Welcome to story time. Shall we try it with the banjo? Sure. <laughs> Clap everybody and say hello, say hello, say hello. Clap everybody and say hello. Welcome to story time. Wonderful. You know, I like to say hello in lots of other languages. So let's say hello in Maori. And the word is kia ora. Clap everybody and say kia ora, say kia ora, say kia ora. Clap everybody and say kia ora. Welcome to story time. Wonderful. How about hello in Ainu? Iran karapte. That's a nice way to say hello. Clap everybody and say Iran karapte. Say Iran karapte. Say Iran karapte. Clap everybody and say Iran karapte. Welcome to story time. Oh, let's do Esperanto for fun. That's a lovely language. Saluton. Clap everybody and say saluton, say saluton, say saluton. Clap everybody and say saluton. Welcome to story time. Welcome everyone. I think we're going to have a wonderful time today. Now, before we get started, let's get some blood moving and some energy out with our friend, the Grand Old Duke of York. You ready? And if you don't know it now, you will by the time it's over. The Grand Old Duke of York, he had 10,000 men. He marched them up to the top of the hill and he marched them down again. And when you're up, you're up. And when you're down, you're down. And when you're only halfway up, you're neither up or down. Do you have it? I bet you do. Let's speed things up a little bit. The, and, and take a deep breath. Here we go. The Grand Old Duke of York, he had 10,000 men. He marched them up to the top of the hill and he marched them down again. And when you're up, you're up. And when you're down, you're down. And when you're only halfway up, you're neither up or down. The Grand Old Duke of York, he had 10,000 men. He marched them up to the top of the hill and he marched them down again. And when you're up, you're up. And when you're down, you're down. And when you're only halfway up, you're neither up or down. The Grand Old Duke of York, he had 10,000 men. He marched him up to the top of the hill and he marched him down again. And when you're up, you're up. And when you're down, you're down. And when you're only halfway up, you're neither up or down. Super fast! The Grand Old Duke of York, he had 10,000 men. He marched him up to the top of the hill and he marched him down again. And when you're up, you're up. And when you're down, you're down. And when you're only halfway up, you're neither up or down. <laughs> nice job, everyone. All right. Well, we've got stories today that all have something to do with a word that starts with the letter F. Uh, oh, there we go. And I was thinking about some words that start with F and I thought of, uh, well, there's fox. That starts with F. And um, fenugreek, which is a kind of plant and you can make tea out of it. Um, I can't really think of any more words that start with F. But you know, fortunately, I've got some guests here who can help me. Would you like to uh, give me a hand oh. thinking of... Oh, hi. Hi, Christopher. <laughs> it's Kashi hi, and Astrid. Kashi. Hi. Oh, hi, Astrid. <laughs> Could you help me think of any words that start with F? Oh, yes. Of course, the word I thought of first was friend. Oh, that's a good one. And I also thought of the word fancy. Ooh. And another one is called... Fortitude. Ooh, a threefer. Yeah. What about you, Astrid? <laughs> well, the words I can think of are fennel. 
Oh, I love fennel. Mm. And freckle. Oh, I like freckles too. Wonderful. Well, you know, we don't have any stories today about fennel, fenugreek, friends, fortitude, Aww. fancy, or foxes. Huh. But we do have stories today all about frogs. Oh. And a little bit with friends too. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe they have freckles. Who would say? <laughs> well, that would be great. Thank you both very much, and on with the stories. Bye. Our first story today is The Biggest Frog in Australia by Susan Roth, and I think you're going to enjoy it. Once upon a time, in dream time, there was a giant frog in Australia. And one morning, this frog woke up so thirsty. Well, the frog drank all the water in the puddles and all the water in the billabongs and all the water in the rivers and then drank all of the water in the ocean. Now, you might think that frog would be getting pretty stuffed by that point. Well, I would be. But the frog still wasn't done drinking. So the frog stretched out its legs and got so high and looked up at the clouds and scarfed all the water from the sky down. And now there was no water left in all of Australia. Well, as you can imagine, with no water and no clouds, it was getting hotter and drier and hotter and drier every day. The plants were starting to droop over. The animals were just panting from thirst, so thirsty. The sand was so hot. There was no place to go to get some relief. So they thought, it's about time that frog gave us some water back. Well, how are we going to get water out of a frog? Well, old Wombat thought, I know just what to do. If we can make frog laugh, maybe he'll spit back some of that water. Yeah, it's worth a try, isn't it? So Wombat said, who knows a joke? <laughs> well, no one raised their hand, so Wombat said, hey, how about this one, frog? This is my favorite joke. What did one snowman say to the other snowman? I don't know. Do you smell carrots? <laughs> well, I think it's a pretty funny joke, but no one laughed. Frog didn't laugh. He just sat there looking with his eyes half closed, not amused. Well, another animal, Echidna, came over. I hope that's how you pronounce that animal's name. And said, let's tickle Frog. Well, all the animals gathered around to give Frog a little tickle. Nothing. No response. I guess frogs aren't very ticklish. Well, peop the animals were getting hotter and drier. And all they could think about was getting some water. Hmm. They didn't know what to do. They were getting quite cross. And Frog didn't pay attention to anything. So Wombat said, does anyone have another joke? And all the animals groaned. They didn't know what was worse, no water or another joke from Wombat. But just then, Frog started to stir. He noticed two eels that were writhing around 
and almost all tied up in knots. They wanted water so much, but they were so slippery still. And Frog was watching them, and the eels were squirming all around, and they actually did tie themselves into a knot, and they were trying to get free of each other, and Frog started to chuckle. And then eels noticed so they kept moving and shaking, and then suddenly they popped apart like two springs and started jumping around. And Frog started to laugh and guffaw, and all the water that Frog had drunk out came spilling out of him to refill the ocean and the clouds and the rivers, the billabongs, and the puddles, and everything went back to normal. And they didn't let Frog drink that much water again. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for listening. I think it's just about time for another song, but we might need Ralph for this one. Oh, Ralph! Oh, there's Ralph. Hey, Ralph, how you doing? Good. <laughs> Ralph, what have you been up to lately? Just chewing, chewing on things? <laughs> You're always chewing on a tin can or grass or who knows what you get up to. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, Ralph, I wondered if you'd like to lead us in a little song today. You might know it. It's, would you like to do that? Sure. All right, here we go. Well, dance any way you want to, dance any way you please, dance any way you want to, but stop when I say freeze. Gotta stop. <laughs> Even you, Ralph. Okay. Well, hop any way you want to, hop any way you please. Hop any way you want to, but stop when I say freeze. Ralph, I think it's stopping time. Okay? <laughs> oh, swim any way you want to. Swim any way you please. Swim any way you want to. But stop when I say freeze. Sleep. Oh boy, I'm tired. Sleep any way you want to. Sleep any, sleep any way you please. Sleep any way you want to, but Stop when I say freeze. Hmm. No! You woke us up with all that yelling. <laughs> all right, well, Ralph, we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> see you, <ya>, Ralph. <laughs> okay, we've got another great story today. It's by Leo Leone, An Extraordinary Egg. And it features a frog, too. An Extraordinary Egg by Leo Leone On Pebble Island there lived three frogs, Marilyn, August, and one who was always somewhere else. That one's name was Jessica. Jessica was full of wonder. She would go on long walks way to the other side of Pebble Island and return at the end of the day shouting, Look what I found! And even if it was nothing but an ordinary little pebble, she would say, Isn't it extraordinary? But Marilyn and August were never impressed. One day, in a mound of stones, she found one that stood out from all the others. It was perfect, white like the snow and round like the full moon on a midsummer night. Even though it was almost as big as she was, 
Jessica decided to bring it home. I wonder what Marilyn and August will say when they see this, she thought as she rolled the beautiful stone to the small inlet where the three of them lived. Look what I found, she shouted triumphantly. A huge pebble. This time Marilyn and August were truly astonished. That is not a pebble, said Marilyn, who knew everything about everything. It's an egg. A chicken egg. A chicken egg? How do you know it's a chicken egg? Asked Jessica, who had never even heard of chickens. Marilyn smiled. There are some things you just know. A few days later, the frogs heard a strange noise coming from the egg. They watched in amazement as the egg cried cracked, and out crawled a long, scaly creature that walked on four legs. See, exclaimed Marilyn, I was right. It is a chicken. A chicken, they all shouted. The chicken threw herself into the water, and the frogs dove in after her, to their surprise, the chicken was a good swimmer, and fast, too. Then one day, when Jessica was somewhere else, August and Marilyn saw commotion in the water below them. Someone was in trouble. Quickly, the chicken dove into the dark pool. August and Marilyn were frightened. After a few long moments, the chicken reappeared, carrying Jessica. I'm all right, she called. I got tangled in the weeds, but the chicken saved me. From that day on, Jessica and her rescuer were inseparable friends. Wherever Jessica went, the chicken went too. They went to Jessica's secret thinking place and to the Great Pebble Monument. One day they went to a place where Jessica had never been before. A bird flew down from a tree. Oh, there you are! It exclaimed when it saw the chicken. Your mother has been looking all over for you. Come, I'll take you to her. They followed the bird for a very long time. They walked and they walked. They walked under the warm sun and the cool moon. And then... They came upon the most extraordinary creature they had ever seen. It was asleep, but when it heard the little chicken shout, Mother! It slowly opened one eye, smiled an enormous smile, and in a voice as gentle as the whispering grass said, Come here! my sweet little alligator. And the little chicken climbed happily onto her mother's nose. Now it's time for me to go, said Jessica. I'll miss you very much, little chicken. Come visit us soon and bring your mother too. Jessica couldn't wait to tell Marilyn and August what had happened. As she neared the inlet, she shouted, Guess what I found? And she told them all about it. And do you know what the mother chicken said to her baby? Jessica asked. She called her my sweet little alligator. Alligator, said Marilyn. What a silly thing to say. And the three frogs couldn't stop laughing. 
I think it's just about time for Dr. Knickerbocker. Hey, Dr. Knickerbocker! Dr. Knickerbocker, Knickerbocker, number nine. I just got back and I'm feeling fine. Now I've got the rhythm of the head tap tap. Now I've got the rhythm of the head tap tap. Now I've got the rhythm of the nose honk honk. Now I've got the rhythm of the nose honk honk. Now I've got the rhythm of the shoulders do wop. Now I've got the rhythm of the shoulders do wop. Now I've got the rhythm of the elbows bonk bonk. Now I've got the rhythm of the elbows bonk bonk. Tap tap. Tap tap. Honk honk. Honk honk. Do up. Do up. Bonk bonk bonk. Bonk bonk. <laughs> Dr. Knickerbocker, Knickerbocker, number nine. I just got back and I'm feeling fine. Now I've got the rhythm of the hands clap clap. Now I've got the rhythm of the hands clap clap. Now I've got the rhythm of the fingers snip snap. Now I've got the rhythm of Finger snip snap. Now I've got the rhythm of the tummy tap tap. Now I've got the rhythm of the tummy tap tap. Now I've got the rhythm of the hips. Ooh wee! Now I've got the rhythm of the hips. Ooh wee! Clap clap. Clap clap. Snip snap. Snip snap. Tap tap. Tap tap. tap. Ooh wee! Ooh wee! Dr. Knickerbocker, Knickerbocker, number nine. One, a two, a three, four, five, a six, a seven, a eight, and nine. I say a one, one a, a two, two, a, a three, three, four, four five, five, a six, six a seven, seven a eight, eight, and nine. <laughs> Good job, everyone. And we made it. We did it. With only one small mistake. <laughs> Great. Thank you. I've got some announcements about some upcoming shows on AADL.TV that I think you're really going to enjoy. It's more of your favorite staff members from the library doing more things and telling more stories and having fun with you. In two days time on Saturday at 11 a.m., it's the Saturday show and the theme this time is all about the great outdoors. So you can tune in and enjoy that. Also, every Monday at 11 a.m., it's baby time with some of our favorite staff members leading that. And that's for little kids ages 0 to 2 and their parents. So tune in to those. I think you'll really enjoy them. All right, on with the show! We've got time left for just one more story. And it's from Days with Frog and Toad by Arnold Lobel, a favorite. And the story is The Kite. I hope you'll enjoy it. Now, one day, Frog and Toad got a brand new kite, and they decided to take it to the hill to fly it. And Frog was there helping his friend Toad learn how to fly it. And look who it is. It's our friend Toad. Now, I know Toad is looking rather green today, but we can just go with it, right? Yeah. All right. So, Toad, do you know how to fly a kite? Yeah. <laughs> so, what you should do, just in case you need a reminder, is hop down the hill and see if you can get that kite to fly, okay? Yeah. Well, Toad did exactly that. He hopped down the hill and tried to get the kite to go up, and it wouldn't stay in the air. What was worse, there was a nest of robins nearby laughing. Ha ha ha! Your kite's junk! Give up! Well, that's not very nice or helpful. I guess those robins have never heard, don't yuck someone else's yum, right? Yeah. Well, listen, Toad, what I think you should do is when you hop down the hill, give it a little run, too, so you can be running and hopping and then throw that kite up in the air. You think you got it? Yeah. All right. So Toad went running and hopping down the hill and he got to the bottom and threw the kite in the air. Well, it was kind of disappointing. 
and those robins were there mocking and making fun of Toad. <laughs> Give up! Your kite's junk. You'll never get it to fly. Well, rude. Hmm, indeed. I've got one more idea. Toad, when you are running and jumping down that hill, try waving the kite around and see if that'll work. All right. So, Toad did exactly that. He went running and jumping and waving his kite around. Yeah. It still didn't work, and he was giving up, and those robins were there. Don't listen to those robins, okay? They don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. Listen, there's one more thing that I think we could try. If you are running and jumping and waving the kite around, Give it a little yell and say, up, kite, up. And let's see if that works, okay? Yeah. Well, Toad went running and jumping and waving the kite around and shouting, up, kite, up. And you know what? That kite went up, soaring into the sky, and Frog and Toad had a wonderful afternoon together, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Toad. The end. <laughs> well, we've got just enough time for some songs, like the pirate song. Are you ready? Okay. When I was one, I sucked my thumb on the day I went to sea. I jumped aboard a pirate ship, and the captain said to me, Oh, you'll go this way, that way, forwards, backwards, over the deep blue sea. When I was two, I tied my shoe on the day I went to sea. I jumped aboard a pirate ship, and the captain said to me, Oh, you'll go this way, that way, forwards, backwards, over the deep blue sea. When I was three, I tapped my knee on the day I went to sea. I jumped aboard a pirate ship and the captain said to me, Oh, you'll go this way, that way, forwards, backwards, over the deep blue sea. <laughs> Very nice. You know what time it is now. It's time for Knees Up Mother Brown. Let's try to get situated here. All right, let's see if that'll do it. There was a girl from France who didn't know how to dance. The only thing that she could do was knees up, Mother Brown. Oh, knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, knees up. Never let the breeze up. Knees up, Mother Brown. And sit back down. The Australian frog was so thirsty. And when it laughed, it got bursty. <laughs> the only other thing that he could do was knees up, Mother Brown. Oh, knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, knees up. Never let the breeze up. Knees up, Mother Brown. And sit back down. Oh, Jessica found a chicken egg, but that chicken had four legs. 
The only thing that chicken could do was knees up, Mother Brown. Oh, knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, knees up, never let the breeze up. Knees up, Mother Brown, and sit back down. There was a teeny tiny man who loved to do handstands. Oh, can he do it? Can he do it today? Oh, he did it. The only other thing that he could do was knees up, Mother Brown. Oh, knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, knees up, never let the breeze up. Knees up, Mother Brown. Super fast. Knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, knees up, never let the breeze up. Knees up, Mother Brown. Wiggle, wiggle fingers right up to the sky. Wiggle, wiggle fingers and wave them all goodbye. See you next time. Yeah.